is Kobe Graham. I am a lecturer at Tertius University. I also DJ, I write, um, I blog very occasionally, although that's about to increase very significantly. And um, yeah, I think that's, that's me. I've, I, I moved here in bits and pieces. So I first, I first moved here in 1987 when I was around eight or nine. My parents were both in the UK at the time and I guess they needed a bit of help. Um, so my mom kind of sent me over to her mom. So my younger brother and I, um, I was eight, my brother was six. And so we went to live in Cape Coast and I was there for about seven more years. So I finished primary school there then I went to Enfants Pim from Form 1 to 5 and I feel like this gave me some advantages. Uh, for one, I learned the language um, and I got an understanding of Ghana, not from the kind of city side of things that a lot of returnees know, but from a town. I mean, Cape Coast is the former city, but it's a lot more, it has a kind of town kind of feel. And so I got to see a completely different life from from London, even different from living in Accra. Um, so that's the first time I moved. Then I finished secondary school, went to the UK, finished, so no, I finished secondary school in the UK, finished a first degree, worked on a magazine and then did a second degree. And then I was in the UK and there were two things happening. For one, um, I had family that I left behind, particularly younger siblings who were now growing up. And I felt like, I'm a firstborn and maybe I have an inflated sense of my own self-importance, but I felt like they needed me. And so that was one thing pulling me home. And then I felt I was being pushed as well from the UK. Um, it was a bunch of things. It was um, finding work was really hard after 9-11, um, in spite of the fact that I had a great kind of, I had a master's degree with distinction and I couldn't find work. I was the coffee boy at some place. Um, I had a, a landing pad in the form of my dad. Um, my father gave me my first job when I came here and it was something I just wasn't really qualified for. And then I also came down with all these Western ideas. I didn't understand the environment. I would try this and I'd have arguments with workers who um, they understood the terrain a lot more than I did. And I just thought, no, I'm going to push these things through. and it wasn't working. Suffice to say, we got paid from our profit. And I remember going six months without salary. So to begin with, no. But every job that I've had since has come from the previous job. 10 years down the line, I think straight after that, I went and gave a lecture about my work doing social media at the Constitution Review Commission at Ashesi University. And guess where I am now? Ashesi University. With regards to being a lecturer, um, lecturing is something that my, my late mother had been trying to persuade me for a long time to consider. And I just didn't see it. I kept on picturing, what was this movie with Michelle Pfeiffer? Dangerous Minds. And it just was not my portion. Or so I thought. It was when I was working at Joy FM that um, I had the chan a chance meeting with Dr. Esiansa, who's now my colleague. And she listened to all these different things that I do. I was DJing, I was blogging, I was the editor of a magazine called Dust that kind of, we looked at where creativity and kind of community consciousness collided. And it, it brought me in contact with so many different creatives. And so I existed in all these different spaces and she listened to me talk about all of this and she said, you'd make a a great academic. Academia is what would bring all of these things together for you. And I was very skeptical about the time, uh, at, at the time about this. Um, but two jobs later, I found myself at a chassis and I love it. I love just on a day to day being able to think about exciting minds, exciting young 
specifically African mines. Don't come in thinking that you're better than anyone, that you're here to save anybody. Just come in and do your part and acknowledge the fact that everybody is struggling, everybody is hustling and have a fundamental respect for every single person that you meet. Um, regardless of whether you think that you're smarter than them or whether they are of a quote-unquote lower economic class than you, have a fundamental respect for everybody and it will actually take you much further than you think. There is definitely a narrative of, oh yeah, everybody come back and no, it's not for everybody. So I think come down and try it out. But in doing so, you must realize that things don't happen all of a sudden. Time moves very differently on this continent. Um, I've studied it at a philosophical level at this point, and I know that we look at time completely differently. Um, and so you can tell from my own experience, I've been back for 10 years, and it's taken me that long well, okay, let's say about, it took me about five years before I really hit my stride. Um, and before that, I was doing things, but if you had asked me about things maybe five, six, seven years ago, I wouldn't have the same story that I have now. So it, it depends. Um, how much time do you have? How much of a risk do you want to take? Are you married or not married? Um, I had an advantage, a very acute advantage, which is, I'd been here before and I'd lived here before. So I speak the language or one of the languages. I speak Fanti, which allows me to speak to anyone who speaks Akan. But then more importantly, I speak Pidgin English. I went to secondary school here. I have networks, some. Um, and I think these things have been very handy to me. And so they give me an advantage that a lot of people don't have. Someone who's coming in as in this is their first time, I know lots of people who that's been their experience and they've made it. But I also know some people who've come down and they either, they, theirs is to be between where they're, f where, where they're leaving and where they're going to. And then I know some people who they go back. It just didn't work. So it's a risk. Thank you.